Alrighty, so our camera ran out of space for a little bit because we had too many videos on it apparently. So all we did is just put things back. We're going to splice this in, I think, with the uh, the first part of the video. And we just kind of did what we did to the first colony, the exact same thing. We saw the queen, you'll see, in, of course, in the video and all that stuff. Everything looked really good. We're going to give them a little bit of feed just like we did this last one. All right. And you can't just use any old garden watering can like this because some of them do not pour well at all. And some of them are just built so cheaply, you just never know when they're going to puncture a hole in the bottle. So you pay a little bit more, I think. Back when I got these several years ago, I paid $13 a can for that Gerber Fisker can. You can get them online, I think on Amazon. They have different sizes. These are two and a half gallon cans. I like that because back when we were using them all the time, um, you can have a five gallon bucket and you know fill them both up. Just uh, But they've got smaller cans if uh, for whatever reason the weight maybe is a little hard on your back or something. Next time I'm getting these things on with a smoker going because they're getting not really so antsy as much as I'm trying not to crush any of them. And it's really hard to get them to go down without some smoke. All right. So, all right, here's the last one. And in the future, we're not going to have such long inspections. For the first couple videos, I'm trying to, for those who haven't done the packages before or nukes or anything new into beekeeping. I'm just trying to give you a, a pretty good idea of um, kind of what to see and, and what to do. Um, for those of you who are very familiar with this, we're going to have our next video. I think I already said that that's going to be a, a large colony, just a regular colony inspection preparing for the honey flow. So there's going to be a whole lot more bees. And we're definitely going to be using smoke for that one. All right, so let's pull one of these frames out. It's always best to pull an edge frame out because you don't want to roll the queen. That's why it's so important to have straight combs. Another reason why we went to plastic foundation. Now this colony seems to be the smallest. They haven't drawn any on this fifth frame. They've got just a little bit drawn on this frame. Some, just a little bit of stores up there. Done just a little bit on that side. So this one had the most amount of bees drift out of it. I think it probably went to this middle colony. Yeah, but this frame right here looks really good, so maybe they're just focused on it, but I think they are a little smaller. Look at that, though. They've got eggs down in there. They've just just—they've really drawn this out well. they got the stores above, and that's what you always want to see. You always want to see good nectar up here. Again, if they start capping it, then you probably need to back off a little bit, and you need to know your season. Here in Tennessee, our main nectar flow hasn't started. We're just getting trickles in. I'm sure they're bringing a little bit in. Those folks that will tell you that if you feed your bees, they will know when to stop so you don't have to worry about it. That is utter bee poop. It's terrible. Terrible advice. If you put this frame feeder in here, you could have our biggest honey flow going on and they will take that sugar syrup out of there and they will mix it in with the honey. Because bees don't know when to stop and that's what makes them such good honey producers. They don't need all the honey production that they give us but they produce it because they just don't know when to stop that. They were designed that way. So these bees, you will have to watch them because you can plug up all this center space and the queen won't have room to lay and you can really severely set back your colony. All right, so this side had a, a pretty decent bit of brood in it. So I don't want to flip this frame around because then what I'm doing is alienating this brood over here. Even though it's eggs right now, they're gonna need a lot of warmth. So I want them to stay towards the center. So just lean that right there. We are going to check and see what's on this frame here. I am confident this comb right here has got plenty of brood in it. I'm sure we'll probably see the queen on it as well. Excuse me. All right. <laughs> oh yeah, there's nice a uh, little bit of larva down in there, some royal jelly. Let's see here on that side. <laughs> You guys might spot her before I do. And it's not the end of the world. If you don't find her, it's okay. We're seeing eggs. That is a really good sign. And you can just you can just tell the bees are in sync. They are a hive. They are working. They're packing away that pollen, nectar, all that stuff. But again, the, the next videos aren't going to be so long. I'm going to start zipping through these things. 
this just happens to be really the first in-depth inspection. All right, they're drawing this outer frame really good, so even though they weren't working that great on this side, they're drawing this really well. Oh, there she is up there. Hiding underneath some bees, looking for a, a cell to drop an egg in. Look at all that bee bread they have packed away. If there's one thing we do well in spring here in Tennessee and this, this part of the world is we produce a lot of pollen. My allergies can attest to that. Whew. All right, we are just going to, I don't see any brood on that. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this around. You don't have to do that, but it will help them draw out that other side. And we need some good combs. This colony is in desperate needs for combs. So we're gonna feed this one really quick and then we're gonna shut them up. I'll let you know what the mite counts are once I get a chance because we just don't have time for that in this video. Excuse me. And uh, make sure you put all the brood together. That's very important, especially on a small colony. That brood needs to stay in the 90s. And it gets cool of a night still this time of the year. Early April, we, we can definitely drop down even in the 30s sometimes. And a few times we've even had freezes. And uh, So you got to keep that brood together. Very, very important. All right, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Alright, now on feeding, some people will stick on a top feeder or other types of feeders and they will just load these colonies up. I've had so many customers, they'll stick on their hive top feeders that hold two and a half gallons and they'll just load the thing full. Terrible idea. You're putting like 25 pounds of feed on a three pound amount of bees. They can't eat that much food. Even my son can't eat that much food for his body weight. So we're going to give them... I'm going to give them a third, and these are like gallon-sized feeders. They're a little bit bigger than that if you fill them all the way full, but I'm going to put about a third in here, and that'll be plenty good for them. And then you can always come back and check this thing a couple days from now and see how they're doing, especially when you're a hobbyist. You really can give your colonies the attention, the detail that you'd like to give. When you have hundreds, it gets a little bit more interesting. All right, so that's that. We're gonna have a big expect inspection on the next video, more uh, profit style beekeeping. And we just have so much more coming up. I can't even remember all of it. I'm trying to make a list and keep track of all the requests. Thanks so much for watching our videos. Any comments, questions, or insults, leave them below.